Hello everyone and welcome back to Soul Stained Ink. My name is Beth and I am here today with a recommendations video for March Mystery Madness. Now first things first, if you don't know about March Mystery Madness, you haven't seen us talking about it all over the place. Um, it is the entire month of March and we read mystery books. Pretty simple. Um, I am very excited and honored to be co-hosting for my second year in a row. I have a whole plethora of amazing co-hosts. They are all listed down in the description bar. So if I don't read things that are your cup of tea, pop on over there. We cover the entire gamut of awesomeness. Um, now, March Mystery Madness was created by my good friend Elizabeth at Lizzie Faye Loves Books. And Troy Tal over at Tal Troy. Um, they and the rest of them, like I said, are linked down in the description bar. Now, the first thing I want to tell you is that I have actually recommended some of these books to y'all in previous years. There are some new ones. Most of them are middle grade. But I've tried to bring in some cozies and some adult-like thriller mysteries as well. Um, the theme for this year is spring cleaning. We have three prompts, lather, rinse, and repeat. Uh, so you can decide what those things mean to you. <coughs> we had discussed like messy cleanup, things like that. Um, some of these books are most definitely going to be in that kind of area. Then we're also going to have some that are rinsed off kind of cleaner um, or we'll have a really clean wrap up and then we'll have some that are repeat as in they are parts of a series normally I would say that repeat is read the second book in a series or the next book in a series you're reading or read multiple books in a series but you know what these are three prompts in a whole month you do you boo boo all right so a book that is part of a series is Mr. Limoncello's All-Star Breakout Game by Chris Gravenstein. Any of the books in the Mr. Limoncello series are actually... <laughs> Any of the books in the Limoncello series um, have mysteries in them and they are very book-centered. Um, but Chris Gravenstein also writes a mystery series. Um, and a middle grade thriller series. I can't remember their names right now because the tiny person has crawled into my lap. Uh, but if you look up Chris Gravenstein, most of his books have awesome mysteries and, um, they're very well written. They're awesome. You should check him out whether or not it's for a mystery. We also have Nancy Springer's, um, Enola Holmes mysteries. I have read through book six. I think I don't believe I'll be reading any of these this year, but we read the first few of them as read-alongs on my page last year, or on my channel last year. Uh, if you have not picked them up, they are quite fun. Anola is Sherlock's little sister, and she gets into all sorts of trouble. Now, if you're looking for something you can read with kind of a younger children's or younger middle grade reader, uh, we have My Weird School Books by Dan Gutman. Uh, this one is book 18, Mrs. Yonkers is Bonkers. Uh, they all have really fun little mysteries about teachers and things going on in the school. And it's a series, so you can lather, rinse, and repeat. Just read those all month. Same with the Treehouse, uh, the Magic Treehouse books by Mary Pope Osborne. Uh, there's typically a mystery in these as they're trying to figure out what's going on, why they got sent, where they got sent, etc. And those have fact checker books that you can get along with them. We also have Pony Club Secrets by Stacy Gregg. Um, and these are all mystery books centering around riding horses. We've got the Boxcar Children and the Babysitter's Club Mystery Series. Um, Babysitter's Club is by Ann M. Martin, and The Boxcar Children are by Gertrude Chandler Warner. Um, here's another one. This is The Caboose Mystery. Again, Gertrude Chandler Warner. Um, so all of the Boxcar Children books, I believe, are mysteries. 
Um, then we have uh, a little bit newer one. Uh, this one is, I think there's four books out now. There may only still be three out in this series. This originally came out, I want to say in 2020, 2018. I was close. Uh, this is City of Ghosts by Victoria Schwab. Schwab. Um, this is her middle grade series about a little girl who can see and talk to ghosts and go into the veil. She has to solve mysteries behind the ghosts that are around um, her family and the areas that they're in. And it's very fun and kind of thrillery. Then we have The In-Between by Marina Cohen. This one is about a girl whose best friend is moving away and she's going on a trip with her best friend's family to the new place that her friend is moving to and some things happen along the way and they end up in a hotel and there's a big mystery happening it will rip your heart out uh, but it's so so good then we have finding esme by suzanne crowley this one let me solve this mystery and i'll get back to this so Finding Esme is about a little girl whose grandmother just kind of has a knack for finding things. And Esme seems to have inherited that knack. Um, her grandmother is known as a water diviner and she's also called to find wayward items. Esme starts exhibiting these signs after her grandfather has passed away and she finds some bones up on that hill. Um, it's a very, very sweet story, and it actually gets real messy there for a little while in there. Lather, rinse, and a lot of things are repeated. Um, speaking of things that get real messy and need a clean up, Tristan Strong Punches a Hole in the Sky by Kwame Mbalia. Uh, this book is amazing. I read it for a class like about a month ago, I think, and have since read the other two. It is a trilogy. There's a lot of mess. There's a lot of lathering up and repeating. Um, if all you wanted to do was read three books that feature a 12-year-old going into eighth grade black protagonist who's dealing with grief and African gods and African-American folktale heroes who have become gods in a different world with a tiny gum baby doll as a sidekick who is absolutely annoying and definitely the best part of the story, you could read these books, hit every single prompt, and it would not take anything away. It would give so much enjoyment to your life. Read these. All right. I have three more, like, middle grade books to talk to you about, and then we'll move on to the others. So this one is Sammy Keys and the Search for Snake Eyes by Wendelin Van, I think that's draining, drawn in. Uh, the Sammy Keys books are about a girl who is a detective, basically. Um, this one came out in 2002, so they're not as old as this cover would suggest they were. Um, but they follow this girl who's a detective and she keeps getting pulled into hey, mysteries. What? Then I've got The um, Violin Case by Diantha Warfel. This is about a boy who borrows a violin from his auntie and somebody tries to steal it. Um, all sorts of weird, crazy things start happening. And it is set in a fictional town, but it sounds a lot like Las Vegas. Um, also, Finding Esme is set in Texas. So if you, like me, are from Texas, it feels very much like you could look down the road and see that little girl. And then we have... Return to Yesterday. This is inspired by the Netflix series Lost in Space. Uh, this is by Kevin Emerson. And it is about a family, the Robinsons, who are kind of stranded in space. As they've left Earth, Earth has kind of gone to pot. They've left Earth and they're trying to find a place that, um, that people can move to. And they discover a strange portal that allows them to travel back to Earth before they left Earth. And um, he and his sisters end up investigating and cause some things to happen. And there's some mystery as to why this portal is there and all that stuff. All right. Moving on to Cozy Mysteries. I've got Chapter and Curse by Elizabeth Penny. 
This is the first um, in this series, and I read this for March Mystery Madness last year, along with Fiona, and then we got the second book in the series and read that when it was released in August. We completely love them. Elizabeth Penny is a great author, and Chapter and Curse is amazing. A uh, woman and her mother move to Cambridge, I believe. Yep, move to Cambridge to help Nina's Aunt Violet. Uh, so Molly is the main character, and it's her great Aunt Violet. And they're running the family bookshop, and mysteries start happening, and it's fabulous. I also have Tana French's In the Woods. This is not cozy. Uh, this is kind of thriller, police procedural, psychological suspense. Um, definitely mysterious, and that's a whole series. Very good. A Natural History of Dragons by Marie Brennan. This is the Lady Trent memoir series. There are mysteries throughout the whole thing, and it's got a bunch of dragons and stuff in it, which is amazing. Uh, then we have The Secret Next Door, um, and this book is about a woman who moves into a development. Um, she's she's going to give her son the childhood she never had. They move into this really nice neighborhood into this housing development and stuff starts to go down and it is another one of those kind of psychological thriller things you did you went and got this from creed's house obviously i've been reading more mysteries lately because i've got a bunch of them um then we have carol goodman's the stranger behind you you never know who's watching um, journalist Joan Lurie has written a seething article exposing a notorious newspaper tycoon as a sexual predator. But the night it goes live, she is brutally attacked. Uh, she, she suffers from the effects of a concussion, moves into a highly secured apartment building in Manhattan called The Refuge. It used to be a Magdalene laundry. Um, and then Lillian Day is her 96-year-old neighbor. Um, in 41, she witnessed a murder that sent her into hiding. She has not come out since. She relates her harrowing story to Joan and Joe's scenes, sees striking similarities. And then we have Melissa Osgood, newly widowed and revengeful, has burning questions about her husband's recent death. And then she, it all comes together, comes to a head. There's, it's paranormal, slightly psychological, thrillery. It's awesome. Check it out. Then we have The Night We Burned by S.F. Kosa. Um, this one is twisty and turny, more thrillery than mystery, but there is definitely a mystery in it, and it has to do, um, it, well, her past was in ashes until it came roaring back once more. Um, a colleague decides to pursue a story about a murder in her hometown, linked to a deadly fire at a cult compound 20 years prior. And all of Dora's carefully spun deceptions are suddenly at risk. Because she was part of that. It's so crazy and really well written. Then we have The Lady Upstairs by Hallie Sutton. Um, Joe's job is blackmailing horrible men. Hansi Hollywood producers, adulterous actors, corrupt cops, etc. The worst of today's Los Angeles. She's making a bunch of money and she's paying off a debt. Um, and taking back power for the women of the city. She's trying to prove herself to her co-worker and their boss, only known as the Lady Upstairs. And she takes on bigger and riskier jobs until one of her targets ends up murdered. And she has to run. And there's so many twists and turns in that one. <coughs> Definitely mysterious and psychological thrillery. All of the above. <coughs> The Mangle Street Murders by MRC Cassasian. This has, I think, four books in this series. It's a Gower Street detective book. And this is a cozy mystery. It is definitely a lathery, rinsey one. But you can repeat because there's more of them. I absolutely love this series and I wish there was more to it. Then we have Home Before Dark by uh, Riley Sager. It's not nearly as thrillery or paranormal as you think it's going to be, but it does suck you in. There are definitely some mysteries that have to get figured out and solved, and it's twisty and a little messy, 
Gotta get cleaned up. And there is a lot of cleanup in the book. Then we have one called The Changeling by Victor Lavelle. This is speculative fiction. And um, it's got a whole bunch of mysteries. And it's very weird fiction to be sure. But there are a lot of mysteries in there. Then we've got some classics for you. Um, Sherlock Holmes, Arthur Conan Doyle. This is The Hound of the Baskervilles. It's amazing. Read any of them you want, but definitely read them. We also have Robert Louis Stevenson's The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. And we've got Washington Irving's The Legend of Sleepy Hollow and other tales. All of those are fairly mysterious. And then I want to throw in some short stories for you. So the last two books I have for you are short story series. And they are both by Karen Russell. Um, she wrote the book Swamplandia. Swamplandia, I've ordered three times, and every time the book has gotten lost in the mail. Uh, but there are a lot of mysteries in there, too. I tried to read it on Kindle, and uh, I just struggle so hard reading on my phone. But these came in. The first one is St. Lucy's Homes for Home. St. Lucy's Home for Girls Raised by Wolves. Get it together, Elizabeth. Um, so these are over the top. I have you on the edge of your seat. Um, they pull the ground out from under you. Just short, little. There's weird mysteries. They're distorted. Not all of them are mysterious, but enough of them are. The other one I have is Vampires in the Lemon Grove. And again, these are so well written. Um, and some of them are mysterious, some of them are not, but there's always kind of an element of mystery to what's happening in those stories. That's all of the books I have to recommend to you. I probably could have pared it down more, but why would we do that? Why not make an 18 minute video recommending all sorts of different mysteries for you? If you've made it this far, thank you so, so much. I hope that you have an amazing day and that at least one of these books struck your fancy. Till I see you again, stay safe out there. Bye.